stress disorder doing an anxiety test or performing other duties. Okay, you gotta be quiet in the beginning. 30 seconds. Good, gotcha. Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I think we're going to have quite a show today again. I've got a guest here with me, Greg here, who's been with me, with a, he's been on the show before. But uh, he also, uh, because he's had disabilities, uh, with, as far as his... You are watching Oregon Voters Die. ...aspect of it, uh, he's also, he also has a service animal, which is something that uh, I think we're going, we're going to discuss today with Craig, because he, he, he has a, a, an animal, a service animal, and we're going to kind of define that and kind of get a little history on what that's all about and uh, who, can, who can have a service animal. It's... Uh, the, the rights of the animal and the rights of the person as far as public facilities are concerned and on and on and on. But I think it was quite a show and uh, I'd like to invite you and thank you again for being with us. Again, it's Oregon Rose Digest. I'm Bruce Bersard, your host again. Great. How you doing? Good. Good, good, good. Thank you for having me, Bruce. Well, thank you. And, you know, in, in fact, uh, talking about this, and that's what we've been talking about here, you and I, for, for a number of months, you know, in, tar in terms of getting vets to go out and find out what their disabilities are. You got me? And trying to refer them to the VA in one way, shape, or form, and and the VFW is very, 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 very involved in, in that process because those who who served, if you will, in veterans of foreign wars, that's exactly what it's all about. Uh, there are many benefits there. There are benefits there for vets, well deserving, if you will. But the key is that a lot of times what happens is that um, you got all sorts of entities that are out there talking about help the vet. And many of these folks have, have, weren't in the military. No, no, you know, but my, it's, it was a business type thing, so to speak. And sometimes there's a concern about uh, whether or not uh, many of these, a number of these organizations are benefiting the vets aspect of it. And here's one area is a, a good, for instance, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, as, as far as a benefit to the vet. And you, you look around for the organization that's representing that piece, and it ain't there. Yeah. Maybe one individual or whatever. We're going to discuss that aspect of it, about the, the service animal aspect of it. And before we get into that, let me just kind of just read a couple of things about uh, the service animals, uh, if you will. In fact, Greg's got his pup here with him, too. We're going to get Tom to, to, to um, put, a, put a little, give a little camera time there. But what's, what's the dog's name? Yes. Yes. Hi there, yes. <laughs> All right, buddy. Okay. But anyway, um, here's the deal here. First off, let's, let's, uh, I'll, I'll read off in terms of uh, de some definitions here, which I think will, will sort of get you into the uh, conversation that we're having here. Serv service animals are defined as dogs that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for people with disabilities. Examples of such work or tasks include guiding people who are blind. And then that's normal, what people normally see a person with a dog, you know, blah, 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 uh, blind. Alerting people who are deaf, okay? Pulling a wheelchair, alerting and protecting a person who is having a seizure, reminding a person with mental illness to take prescribed medications, calling a person with post-traumatic stress disorder, doing an, an anxiety attack, or performing other duties. Again, that's an area that uh, that I think the public is getting to know PTSD, but they're, 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 a lot of times they tend not to understand the the, the, the relationship between an animal and their PTSD, and that's something we're gonna talk about. Service animals are working animals, not pets, okay? The work or task a dog has been trained to provide must be directly related to the person's disability. Dogs whose sole function is to provide comfort or emotional support do not qualify as service animals under the ADA, okay? Uh, this de definition does not affect or limit the broader de definition of assistant animal. 
under the Fair Housing Act are the broader definition of service animals under the Air, Air Carrier Access Act. Some state and local laws also define service animals more broadly than the ADA does. Information about such laws can be obtained from the State Attorney General's office, okay? And then one other little piece that I want to throw in, then I'll get, we'll get regular. in. This, okay, the Department of Justice published revised, revised final regulations implementing the American with Disability Act, or ADA, for Title II, state and local government services, and Title III, public accommodations and commercial facilities. On September 15, 2010, in the Federal Register, these requirements are rules clarify and refine issues that have been arisen over the past 20 years and contain new and updated requirements, including the 2010 standards for accessible design. That's 2010 standards. Overview. This publication provides guidance on the term service animal and the service animal provisions in the department's new regulations. Beginning on March 15, 2011, only dogs are recognized as service animals under Titles 2 II and 3 of the ADA. A service animal is a dog is that is individually trained to do work or perform tasks for a person with disability. Generally, t Title II and Title III entities must permit service animals to accompany people with disabilities in all areas where members of the public are allowed to go. Very key, okay? And as you know, we're, we're going to have this discussion now is that uh, you've, you've, you've visited, if you will, for public facilities and were, uh, were denied, if you will, the access of your dog. If Correct. You will, and how you were treated and whatever. So why don't we get into that now? Because that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate the public, and especially those veterans who have not gone to the VA, knowing that they may need, if you will, that support, if you will, from an animal. So we want to make sure we, you understand that, and hopefully uh, they'll get the, get the word and go down to the VA, especially those with PTSD, and, uh, and, and share with them about your, uh, your concern about PTSD and talk to someone and then hopefully if, if, if there's a need for an animal of some sort, you, then all of a sudden there it is, you know what I mean? So Greg, let's, let's get right in. Let's, let's talk about your experience first. Let's talk about your experience and then some of the background material that we have here talking about um, uh, you know, this whole issue about service animals. Come on, Greg. I stopped by a local uh, bar and grill near where I live Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it was a nice little place, and I thought maybe I'd, a neighborhood, I thought mm -hmm. maybe I could go there. And I went in for lunch, and I talked to the two bartenders, and I asked them about service animals. They said, no problem. You can bring your service animal in here. The very next day, I go back, and I'm denied access hmm. by another bartender. And I said, well, I was just here yesterday, and they told me it was okay. No. Hmm. I said, I'm a vet. No. I'm a disabled servant. I'm a disabled... <laughs> disabled veteran with a service dog and they they got me so flustered that mm -hmm. I had to leave I mm -hmm. mean even though they changed their mind they said oh come on in I was already too upset Bruce yeah, you know I have yeah, a yeah. Uh, sometimes I can uh, get pretty upset pretty quick mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, yeah, because uh, of your conditions right right and uh, I <laughs> after that having happened to me I went home sat in my garage for the rest of the day alone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with my dog actually so I wasn't, wasn't really alone but mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. it, it just makes you makes you feel like crap I mean uh, I'm a disabled veteran I served my country I got hurt by serving my country mm -hmm. and <laughs> this is a right that I have and when people deny me my rights and my uh, access into places it, it, it bothers me and I, I told you a story about my sister mm -hmm. my sister was shot by her boyfriend three times and then he blew his head off Anyway, my sister ended up in a wheelchair. So, and my mother was a uh, director for the March of Dimes for 38 years, and then my sister got shot. Hmm. So all this is in my mind about, you know, the, the disabled. Mm -hmm. And then here I finally get a dog and I'm discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And I think about my sister in that chair. And I think about all the other veterans because we have a regional VA office here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of veterans that are coming back and they get a letter like I did from the VA okay. telling you that you can have a service dog. Mm. But then it's all left up to you to do the rest of it. There's no follow-up. There's no person that says that calls you up and says, "Hey, come on over. We want to discuss you." And mm -hmm. um, there is a there is an organization up in Battleground, but they have so many vets that they're not reaching out to any more vets. You know, I guess they're too many people. Too many people. And a lot of the places that I call, they're just too many people. But that's not the commitment that was made, if you will, by the president that's right. and the public. 
right? So where, where do we go from here? I mean, let's talk a little bit more about some, some material you shared with me. And I, I know that to whom it may concern, that was uh, nine, dated 9 July 2013, and, and it'd be laid That's out. That's originally when that, I got my letter to, to have a service right, dog. Right, right. And I didn't want to... Uh, <laughs> I didn't want confrontation. I wasn't along enough in my recovery mm -hmm. to handle that kind of rejection. Okay. So I waited a year. Mm, okay. <laughs> and then I started to go back and try and find out about it. And I recently got another letter from the VA this is further right emphasizing that the, right that a service dog was, uh, would be a good idea for me to have. And that was 9, eight, that was 9 18, 14, 14 right. yeah, this, this month. And that, again, that was as a result of the rejection by some of the things that you Oh, uh, I explained to him the other day about what was going on and mm -hmm. he couldn't believe it. Now this is this is what the, your uh, your advisor or something a PTSD? Yeah, that's the new doctor. The new doctor? Yeah. Okay. They okay. keep you on the books with an appointment and then right before your appointment they cancel your appointment. Mm. <laughs> so it keeps you on the books all that time, see? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, one of their many little tricks that they like to do yeah, when yeah. they get their performance bonuses yes, and how they right. lie about the care to the vets right. to ensure that they get their performance bonuses mm -hmm. year after year after year after year after year after year. I know you've got some certificates here about your, your, your dog, Yats, right? Yes. And the Murphy, yeah. Yeah, yes, and, and, your, and, and, and the Murphy family. Well, I took now, him to a canine things? training center and uh, he got his associate's degree. This is, this is the one here? Right. And that's a basic uh, obedience like classes. Okay. And then I took him uh, for his bachelor degree. So he has his bachelor degree and an associate's degree from everything in the ARC. And okay. that was uh, trainer Megan K. Col Colwell, and this one who's uh, one of the local trainers this one around right here. here. Yes. Okay. You got, here's another one. You got another. This, that's the other one. That's his bachelor's degree. This is a bachelor's degree right here? I got it. Okay. And then you got another one. Now, this, this is my... Um, Recognition Award for being a peer support specialist. This is part mm -hmm. of what I'm working on with Bruce is the continuing this peer support specialist training so that I can uh, further help vets. Right, right, right. And that's what we do. That's, that's Correct. It. And in fact, that's, that's one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing today because uh, there's a lacking, if you will, of that information. It's like anything else. You, you, you know, information is key. It's very much concerned. And, and for those who are viewing this particular show, again, we, we're trying to encourage you to um, to talk to your your relative, if you will, or another vet, and let them know that there there there, there is support and there's help out there. You just have to seek it, and, and a lot of times vets tend to, man, they tend not to want to talk about it. Yeah, and they got a lot of issues. Going on there. In addition to this training, I was also a volunteer driver for Catholic Community Services, mm -hmm. and I helped the elderly and uh, infirm go to their appointments. And that. my dog was with me a lot of those times. Mm -hmm. I would also work for the Ark of Southwest Washington. And, uh, and the ARC, what is the ARC? A -R -K, what is that? Uh, it, it, uh, they help uh, mentally and uh, mentally challenged and handicapped people. Okay, okay. Right? And I worked there for a while, and I used to bring my dog into work. And then I continued um, volunteering there, and I've been on walks that we've set up with uh, some of the handicapped to get them mm -hmm. out into the community. And we walked Burnt Creek uh, Trail, and mm -hmm. the, there were bikes and my dog and my uh, the executive director of the ARC, he had his dog out there and it was uh, really nice. And the vets really loved the, the dog being with them. Yes, yeah. well, yeah. the disabled, right. not the, disabled. Not the, the disabled. vets. The, the, the disabled, the disabled. Correct. Well, tell me uh, again a little bit more about, um, uh, you know, the, the rationale for you having a, an animal yourself. Share it with them. More, more. <laughs> It took me nine years to talk to my therapist about all this, Bruce, but I'll mm -hmm. open up on your show. Go ahead, open up. Open up. Open up. On it. No problem. With it. Well, that's what we want to do. And that's what we want to do, right? This is the that's real, what we want to do, and that's, that's part of the reason that I'm here. Yeah. I figure if I'm helping other vets, what people think about me doesn't really matter. I, right. I'm here to help vets. Right, right. I had traumatic experiences when I was on active duty, and for many years, I didn't understand why. I was feeling the way I did and mm -hmm. doing the things I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got in a lot of trouble. And then you look back on your life and you realize that traumatic experience yeah. affected you more than yeah. you thought it did. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, 25, 30 years down the road, last week I woke my wife up screaming. Mm -hmm. 
I woke her up again rolling out of bed thinking I was rolling out of a fire. Mm -hmm. So these things come up. And that's another thing I'd like to mention. When these people tell me, no, I can't go in there with my service dogs, it not only brings up my little sister, but it just brings up all the other veterans mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. the other stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. And then my mind starts to spiral. And you think about every little crappy thing that ever happened to you. I start picking on or picking up in my head some of the stuff the guy said to me during that time. Mm -hmm. And I play those tidbits and information. One of the guys was taking a boat hook and he was smacking a little dead baby trying to get it over next to the boat. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, look, Murph, I got a live one. Mm -hmm. I play that sentence in my head over and over and over. And that's just one sentence. There's mm -hmm. a lot of sentences that I mm -hmm. play over and over in my head. And you were in the Coast Guard. Yes, I was in the Coast and, Guard. And some of the things that you were doing, if you will, again, that was, that was a major impact in terms of uh, you, who you were, who yeah. you are, in, are today, if you will. Yes. Stopping boats. People don't realize the, the danger, if you will, of being a Coast Guardsman, for that matter, w working along the shores, if you will. And When people run out of the sea, we run out to mm -hmm. save them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the Marines run in, we... <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't save them. No, we can't. And, and you can't save them all. That's another mm -hmm. thing that really affects you. Mm -hmm. And you, you do the best you can, and you think, well, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. It's not good enough in your mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the same things these guys are experiencing now. The hell I experienced then, and the hell I experienced now is nothing compared to what's happening to these vets now. Mm -hmm. I bleed for them. Mm -hmm. That's what really gets me upset, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the way I was, the things that happened to me in my life, and my finally realizing, well, maybe it was this, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you start to look at things in your past history and it all starts to line up yeah, 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 and you yeah, see yeah, all the connection yeah, yeah. the connecting dots yeah, right, and you realize yeah. what right. happened to you and right. why you feel this right, way right, right. and you either go and you get help with it or you just deal with it yourself mm -hmm. and as you know 22 veterans a day are killing themselves mm -hmm. what if a veteran goes in just got back from Iraq and he gets one of these dogs he goes down his local bar mm -hmm. where he's been drinking all his life maybe he mm -hmm. comes back home mm -hmm. proud brings his dog in they tell him no you can't bring your dog in Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you think that vet feels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, that's why we're doing the show. You know, we're trying to educate the public because, as you know, we have a no draft system within our ranks. And, you know, I've always, I was, in all due respect, I've always felt that uh, the draft system was really America. I mean, all of us participating, making sure that we're all there. I mean, here we are trying, discussing whether or not uh, we should have more grounds on the troops, if you will. You got me? Troops and on the ground. Troop, troops I'd, on I'd ground. have those too. You know, and then the, you think that um, uh, a lot of folks don't understand that, that many of the people who who are volunteering to go in uh, are really not the upper echelon of our society. Mm -hmm. And and so a lot of times they don't understand uh, about the fact that, you know, these guys go in and they get these bonuses and whatever. And, That's right. You're 18, and, 19, yeah, 20 yeah, years old yeah. and they're going to give you this much yeah, money just right. to join? Exactly. They, Sign on a dotted right. line? And then they come back, maybe legs or whatever and this, that, and the other. And, you know, if not that, they didn't get nothing happened to them on their legs or whatever. But the mindset, you know, seeing seeing all those those kinds of things, if you will, are there. And they're, they're saying, well, gee, what's the problem? I mean, there's no problem. I mean, you know, gee, I'm hunting every day. And shooting animals, I mean, what's the difference? You know, that type of thing, you know what I'm saying? And it's really, they just don't understand. They really uh, don't understand. The lack understand. of empathy is just uh, amazing. Uh, I think that we're turning our backs on our vets. Yeah. And stuff like that, this happens to me. Mm -hmm. It's happening to other vets. Mm -hmm. I further feel like they're turning our backs on mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, on that same line, you know, we, we've got to educate those folks, too. And so maybe we need to talk about solutions, if you will, to that particular problem. So like, for instance, what should we do to drive the parents? They got a lot of decals on their windows, you know, when you walk in, advertising Visa and MasterCard and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Why can't they have a decal on the, you know, required that we're, to have a decal on their front window or whatever saying, Dogs are welcome. Vets well, are it's funny you mention that, Bruce, because the place that told me no on the second try has that sign in their window. They had the sign. And it says, no pets, only service animals. And what did I tell them when I walked in, Bruce? Service animals. I have a service animal. So um, these are people that are blatantly breaking federal law. And <laughs> after this happened to me, I had a friend of mine. I said, hey, Jim, why don't you call these people and see what they think about you taking in your service dog? And he's from Georgia. He's a good old boy from Georgia. And he, 
he'd, he'd be the kind that would take Ugg in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he called and he said, uh, I'd like to find out about uh, if I could bring my service dog in. And the person on the other end of the line said, we'll deal with you when you get here. And my friend thought, well, I don't really think I want to go there if that's yeah, the way you're going to yeah, deal with me. Yeah. <laughs> so he never, you know, that's the attitude of this one place. And that, in addition to what happened to me, infuriates me even more and makes me want to do something that I would normally wouldn't do. I contacted the Department of Justice. Okay, okay. And I'm a, I filed a, a complaint, a disability complaint, with um, the city ADA offices. And uh, I'm also hoping that the Department of Justice is going to look into things along with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, enforcement is, is, is something that a lot of times, in all due respect, we need. But well, well, that's and, the other and, thing. And when enforcement takes eight weeks before they even get back to you, yeah. <laughs> that kind of makes you a little upset. Yeah, but that, that's that, in fact that's where. Well, I mean, before before all of a sudden this action to do something about vets aspect of it, a lot of these things were happening then. I mean, many many things along that line. But now that it's there, and then hopefully the public are recognizing the fact that this is a benefit to this country. I mean, they, they, as you say, I mean. They, they, Many of us fought for this country. I mean, we, we, we made many sacrifices, if you will. In some cases, you lose your loved ones, your kids, and it's hard to raise a family while you're overseas, you know. Yeah. I mean, firefights and this, that, and the other, and it's a very, very stressful condition, and a lot of folks get caught up in those kinds of things. So, so now, again, in terms of solution, okay, now, you said the decals are there, but then I asked myself the question, uh, many of these restaurants don't have the decals in their windows. That's right. Okay. And uh, maybe that should be a requirement, you know, from the standpoint of a person maybe going to um, uh, to restaurant associations or, uh, or some public association that, that's uh, associated with licensing, if you will, and making that a requirement as part of the licensing process, blah, blah, blah. And in fact, it's just like if you violate cooking and all this other good stuff, you can get fined. Okay. Right. And so, so me and the inspector, because I'm a first at uh, at Norma's Kitchen, uh, we get inspected at once a month, and there are things that we have to do and and that are looked at, and if that became part of the criteria, for either checking you off from the standpoint that you you passed the test or something right. like that, then fine. But but that that decal should be one of the things that should be a part of that. Help me. And um, and then actually, if you violate it. If you violate, like you like you've done, you basically checked it out, and you you know, and you respond. That should be some authority. Uh, if you will, that the person may be fine. Well, and that's another thing. You know, days go by, weeks go by. You don't yeah. hear from anybody. Yeah. And you start to think, well, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> and then out of the blue, somebody's going to call you back. I hope. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But at least, but at least, like I said, you responded. You know, you 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 you, you filed, if you will, the. Uh, it, it, something that uh, well, hopefully they will react. They're going to have to act on whatever. Well, the city of Vancouver uh, put in the, uh, when the ADA rules came out in 2011. Right. The city of Vancouver came up with uh, guidelines for service animals. The Vancouver Washington. Vancouver Washington, where I live, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know anything about those rules and regulations, mm -hmm. and that's a shame. That uh, I recently went and I was going to talk to the Vancouver Downtown Association. And while I was on my way in there, I happened to meet one of the county commissioners for the city. And I talked to him, and I explained to him my plight, and uh, he's going to bring it up to the county commissioners next week. Mm -hmm. How does it compare in Portland? Have you, have you frequented any places? The uh, only place I go in Portland is Norma's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, do, we do accept pets. <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> With no problem. I talked to your employee yesterday. Oh, did you? And extensively, and her knowledge is quite good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. She's, very, she's very good. I mean, she's... So good that she's she's pursuing a degree, if you will. Well, I don't know why she's working for you, but you're that? lucky. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's and now now let's talk about again that, trying to solve this problem. Some of the things that we might want to consider, but we should consider, if you will, uh, to implement this policy with, with with dogs, with animals, and pets, and yourself would be acceptable. Okay, we talked about the decal. We talked about it making it part and parcel of the uh, registration. Uh, application for going into business, okay, or other public facilities, okay. The other one is the dog themselves. You know whether you made mention about that someone had sent you a, had picked up a, a kind of a collar or some sort, not a collar, but a front 
what we call a little vest kind of a deal. This, um, I was, as a volunteer of the ARC, uh, the executive director and I were talking, and I explained to him my story, and he mm -hmm. went online and he bought me this vest. He bought, he bought you And this is a disabled veteran uh, vest that goes on your dog. Okay. okay. And he also, you know, he, he, he put PTSD on there. And you know, Bruce, I, I don't even want to put that on my dog. Yeah, I don't want everybody to start questioning me. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, it, it's none of their that business. That could be painful. That could be and painful. And like you I said, it just starts to get yeah, you all yeah, spiraling yeah, again. It does. Yeah, it does. Now, you know, we were talking about the vest, but maybe, like, for instance, when uh, you want to get maybe a, a benefit or something, whether it be Home Depot or this, that, and the other, they ask to show you your card. And your card has your photo there, and it tells you the branch of service you served in, and it tells you whether or not you're medically, whatever, and it says it, it stamps it on there. Well, maybe something comparable. So a lot of times wearing a vest, it's kind it of be bulky. It's annoying, if you will, to the and pet. And the heat here, I'm and worried about him in the heat because right, right. he's got a lot of hair. And why not, a vest well, on why not carry a, a similar kind of a card, if you will, for your dog with your photo on it and the dog's photo on it? Well, the ADA does offer that, but I haven't heard anything back from the ADA. Well, they do offer that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> And there's also places I recently found out that I can get um, my dog certified as a service dog but i think with all the training that he has and the letters that i have from the va he is a service dog so i'm going to take the extra step and go and pay out of pocket mm -hmm. and have him tested as a service dog and if the trainer thinks that he's uh, worthy of that designation he'll get that designation if he's mm -hmm. not i'll have to pay out of pocket and go to school with my dog mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to get him uh, certified mm -hmm. which i don't need to do and it doesn't have to be done mm -hmm. according to the ada right exactly <laughs> but these are the kinds of things that i feel that i have to do in order to get people to understand the plight of others right. because i'm going to do all this doesn't mean everybody else can do it right, in exactly. fact you see here i have a vietnam medal on my that's dog right, that's right, that's that right. a friend of mine gave me yes right exactly. actually bruce gave me this yes if you'll pull him around the other yeah. side and let come the on, camera see him okay. He's got hey, a guys. Vietnam medal around his chest Come here, there. Come on over here, buddy. When my Vietnam Come buddy here. told me, here, Bruce told me, there, or there, there. I told there, him there, about there. what was going on, there, there. He, he gave me one of his there, medals there, to put right on my there. dog. Why don't you sit down, buddy? Sit. Sit, 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 sit. There you there go. Good go, boy. There we go. There we go. Get that. There, there you go. He got, he's got one of my medals on. I thought I'd give him a medal. I got the medal. You got the medal? Let me get the focus. I'll get the dog Okay, you got the medal? You got the dog in the middle? Yes, I do. Okay. Hey, my cat. How you doing, big guy? Huh? So this is my first effort at trying to get people to uh, realize he's a service dog. I put one of your medals on there, and I yeah, appreciate you. you doing that for me, Bruce. Sure, buddy. Hey, anytime, buddy. All the time. Very important. Okay? Right, cats? He's a good dog, too, boy. He's a gooey. Well, he knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. He's a gooey. He's a goody. Get on the other side there, my cats. You know, and I, and I think it's, it's fair, folks, that, um, yeah. you know, we just need to know. I mean, that's what it's all about. And what we're going to do now, we're going. I think we're going to take a short break, and what we may we may open up the line and see whether or not there might be some folks that are interested out there might want to ask us a few more questions. And and again, we're encouraging you. We're encouraging you that if you feel the family member who has served in the in the military, especially those who have served overseas and in any warlike conditions, please, please contact, ha, get, pick them up. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to see if we can might be able to put something in, even at Norman's Kitchen do a Sunday thing or something like that, SOS or something like that, and stuff on the shingle, folks, if you don't know what that's all about. But, you know, but again, we still would like to get that word out because there are many, many vets out there that really need the service, and they don't know where to go. A lot of times they get it, end up being homeless and a whole bunch of, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back, and we're going to open up the lines and see what you think, okay? You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Okay, welcome back once again. Uh, my my friend uh, Craig is here with me, and uh, we're talking about service animals, you know. And he's got one, and that's what we've been doing the first half hour aspect of it. And so we're going to open up the line, and uh, if you want to respond to uh, service animals, or whether you have one or you don't have one, or or you may have someone that you think might be of, of interest that that should have one. Uh, we're going to talk about that and tell you, let, let these people know. But we would like for you to give us a call, and maybe there might have been some incidents within your own life, whether you're a vet, with a service animal, or if not that, you are a family member uh, who is who's familiar with uh, a person who have, uh, who have but, a service or animal. Or the disabled. Or the, the disabled. Dog. Yeah, the disabled aspect of it. All right, so give us a call. You got the number on the, on the screen there. Uh, you, you got the number on the screen, and we'll just do that, okay? But anyway, just give us a call. Give us a call, and Craig and I are just going to keep on talking about this. Well, now that we've, we've talked about service animal vets, let's talk about uh, uh, those vets who have yet to visit, if you will, the VFW. We basically are, are there at the VA, uh, helping vets fill out that paperwork. So a lot of times people don't want to want to get into checking out their benefits because, in all due respect, they're, they're thinking, well, gee, I'm going to have all this paperwork. I don't know what I'm looking at. It takes time, or if not that, I, I don't have the money, if you will, to get a lawyer, because they right. do have professional help, but it costs you, okay? Uh, but the fact of the matter, this is free. The VFW, you know, right? Yes. Veterans of Foreign War, it's free, and it's right there at the VA. And, and it's not just for veterans of foreign war. That's right, that's <laughs> right, that's right. And, uh, yeah, right, it, it, you don't necessarily have to be overseas. You can, hey, if you served, if you, if you served in the military, it's available for you. But you need to know. And these people, are they've got the background. And uh, we can do a whole listing of things. If you, if you want to go back to school and, and you say, well, gee whiz, I've already exhausted my, uh, uh, my, my educational bonuses, if you will. Uh, but guess what? You can get this reinstated. You can get 48 months. Uh, it's basically getting you, the whole idea is to get you back in society getting you back in society. Well, the, the majority of vets that are killing themselves now are in our age group. Yep, yep, that's right. Well, actually, you're older than I am, a little older than I am. Are you talking about the dog? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's between like 50 and 59, somewhere in that age group. That age group is the majority of the veterans that are killing themselves are in that age group. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think one of the, one of the issues I think that uh, uh, is a major concern, they're not active. They're not, they're not active. I mean, actually getting out. It, it takes an effort, if you will, to get out. And even myself. I mean, I, I do these shows and aspect of it, but I'm a very active kind of a guy, so to speak. But many folks are just not active, you know, and they just won't talk to people. They're very reserved and this, that, and the other. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a very serious situation. It is serious. And with all the restrictions on the VA, uh, as a driver for Catholic Community Services, one of the people that I drove was low income. And when we got back to her house, she explained to me I had to carry all the groceries upstairs. And I asked her, don't you have a husband? She had a ring on. And she says, yes, my husband's a Marine Corps vet, and he won't leave the house. Mm -hmm. The VA is no longer allowed to go to that veteran's house and talk to him and get him down to the VA and try to get him some help. Why is that? Don't, don't, they don't have that kind of a service anymore? No, they don't. That's the thing we're, trying to talk, we're talking about trying to do. Because a lot of times, you know, vets will talk to another vet with no problem. Yes. Trust me. I mean, that's why I wear the logos, if you will, the Vietnam hat, if you will, because I want people to recognize the fact that I was in Nam. And trust me, it, it, it works because when people come into the facility at, at Norma's Kitchen, the wife's place, uh, they see my hat and they say, well, geez, when, when did you serve? Where were you? You know what I mean? What were you doing? What was your MOS? Uh, do you remember this person here? We remember that? Then we get into this discussion aspect of it, and they just open up, you know. And as I mean? an instant. Uh kinship, friendship that's yeah. established yeah. by vet on vet. And, yeah. and you're, you've been through a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And you had same, similar experiences. Well, that's or your you family's well, been that's, that's sort of like how we, you met. We met because I think you were selling products at the time when we first met. You were selling, uh, I think you were selling di what, what it, some cartridges and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, toner. <laughs> yeah, and you, was, you, was, you came over to my place and said, hey, look, aren't you ready for some toners? And the next thing you know, we, we're in the military. You know, talk <laughs> about all kinds of goodies and explore. I mean, and since then, we've, we've basically been friendship for, for a number of years, about eight years now. So ever since I opened up the place. You got me? There's a lot of uh, inner, inner rivalry between the services, and a lot of uh, words get exchanged and teasing each other yeah, about yeah, their that's services. Right, that's right. Like, like your department of the Marine Corps, is that something like that? 
No, you guys were, no, you know, the there. Navy used to take yeah, you no. guys around on little boat trips, right? right? They, they were the Department of Marine Corps, right? <laughs> they were the Department of Marine Corps. Department of Marine Corps. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You, you understand that. <laughs> Is that the uh, men's division of the Navy? What is that now? <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, folks, we do this every day. But again, you know, it's the relationship. You know, it's a relationship uh, that we've developed, and uh, and it's getting out and sharing your feelings and about what happened to you when during that particular time because there were some very in interesting issues uh, that I was into and when I was in Nam up there in Da Nang on Marble Mountain, if you will, and getting hit every night. Yeah. It's a very, very interesting situation or whatever. Well, I was happy you explained some of the things that you've been through, Bruce. Yes, Only yeah. Uh, yeah. affirmed in I my mind that the, the, these traumatic experiences are real. Yeah. And, then, you and know, uh, sometimes you can put them away. Yeah, yeah. And you can reach down and grab and grow another pair. Yeah. Not all vets can. That's right, that's and right. it doesn't that's make right. them less of a vet. That's right, that's right. You know, one other thing you mentioned about the fact that, uh, which I think we, we need to do, we need to audit, if you will, these many services that are out there, you know what I mean, the vet services. And there should be some central location that a vet can call, a 1-800 number, and, and then boom. And then uh, the, these would be bona fide, certified organizations, you got me, that are actually doing the job. Because you've got all kinds of organizations that are out there but uh, you know they just went through the process of, of getting a getting license as a business. You get me? Get, getting a non a nonprofit uh, a non you know nonprofit uh, vacation, uh, whatever. And then you got, gee, gee, I, I represent vets. What do you do? Well, I just represent vets. Yeah. And this is how much I need. You know. And and then as you were saying, uh, the bulk of the money goes in that pocket administration. Yeah. So I think that there's a need to audit all veteran organizations and let them go through a certification process on an annual basis. Let's like get some other does. people to do that, Bruce. Like we're going to be does. pretty busy. No, we're going to do that here on the show. We're going to do it on the show. Oh, okay. But, but, why, but why not? I mean, uh, if your business, I mean, it's a, it's business, you have to recertify every year and then on a monthly basis, okay? So why can't we do that with veteran organizations if, in fact, it's so important because the public is, we, the public is being told, uh, hey, veterans are in need, if you will, and the fact of the matter is, we need to give them the understanding that look, not all organizations are right. We want to make sure we, we do get to the needs of vets, if you will, and if this is a void, for instance, I mean, right up front with it, I'm doing the first show on on, on, on animals, if you will, on, on service service animal, and you you brought up some interesting points in terms of the process. If in fact uh, you've got a service animal, this is the, it's the process. If, if someone uh, refuses you, f refuses you from bringing an animal, there is a process that you can you can file, but you need to know who to file it with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that's a good that's a good thing. So, if you had all these veteran organizations listed, and then there's an issue that you have, you pick up the 800 number, you call the person. There's someone on the other end say, "Hey, look, uh, someone messed with my pets, or this, that, and the other." Okay, fine. The person knows what's going on. Send you this organization, and it's legit. Right? You got me? Right. Otherwise, got they're just out there. Or if not that, they, some guy comes back and I'm not trying, you know, I'm not trying to uh, promote anything, but they refuse that animal, they come back and things happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? And so we don't want that to happen. No. We don't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, some other updates, if you will, about, you know, we, that's the other push we've been going to the, the VFW. A lot of folks don't go. Why? True. Why is that? Why is that, Craig? Right? It's hard. It's uh, you already don't know what's wrong with you. You're already having problems at home. You're probably drinking, <laughs> fighting, uh, doing silly things that you shouldn't do, and you're not putting everything together. You're not putting the way you are now as uh, after the trauma and hooking those two things together is not always that easy. Mm -hmm. It's take years and years of therapy mm -hmm. and unfortunately the VA likes to give us a lot of medications yeah, 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 <laughs> and in yeah, fact I'm, yeah. I'm getting some new medications yeah, new medication, and uh, I, I've got to look it up and figure yeah, out everything. Out I recently heard about a vet that got some medications from the VA and uh, they, weren't they weren't supposed to be used together Jeez. and he died. Wow. I don't know much more than that but I'm, gonna, I'm looking into that well, one. That's, that's, giving, giving you the pill. That's right. it. He's a he's an Iraqi vet because okay. the guy that told me is Iraqi vet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, is there any? Can you call? Now, now, in your particular case, you're saying that happened. So, who do you call? Hmm. What, what do you do when you get the, so you get the prescription, right? Is there is there is there a listing, if you will, 
of an entity that you can call and say, oh, look, I, this is who I am, and I got these pills, and, and this, this, these are my diagnoses. I'm lucky uh, my, uh, <laughs> my mother-in-law has a doctorate from Harvard and used to work for Wyeth Ahurst Pharmaceutical Company. Okay. And she knows quite a bit about medications and stuff. I'm also going to go see a civilian therapist and pay out of pocket, and I'm going to ask him about these drugs. Mm. Mm. Not many veterans are doing that either. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, but then, but then, I guess the, the Congress just put together this budget, if you will, raising this this, this enormous sum of money. Sixteen point nine billion dollars. Yeah, putting it into the well, well, well. But naturally, the public that's coming out of your pocket, the public's pocket. So, where's the money going, and for what? And uh, how do you check and balance this kind of money? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's some tough time because there's education issues, there's crime issues, there's all sorts of these other issues. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, gee, what about me? You know, that type, because that's where we are right now. Right. Where about me? I don't have a job. Or, uh, I got this, I got that. I'm not a vet, so I can't get no benefit. Well, but you I, were talking about earlier, that's one of the reasons that a lot of these younger men are, and women are going into service. They yeah, can't get a job. That's right. You right. get out of college and you go flip burgers after that's you have right. a degree. That's right, that's right. Can't get them. So they get, they force themselves to get in the military. That's right. And sometimes, in some cases, that's not the best route. That's not the best route. So then all of a sudden they get back and, or whatever, but at least they're saying, well, I'm feeding my family, or something to that effect. Right. So, but, but so we need to... And again, that's that's that auditing system about that the, the kind of money that was just recently dumped in. I guess they said most of that money was going to go towards hiring more personnel. Correct. See, and that's the other issue. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure you're probably familiar with the fact that when you were in and when I was in, uh, you know, the the support support staff of the of the Marine Corps, and, as from a medical standpoint, were servicemen, and, and they could relate. Right. You know what I mean? But in all due respect, uh, under today's with the no draft situation aspect, there with the smaller army, a small, small military, um, you got many civilians who have never had the background in that arena. What impact would that have? I mean, we we talked about that. That's a that's a rough <laughs> rough deal. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot for these people to go through. In fact, I took uh, I asked my therapist at the VA if I could go through anger management, and while I was going through that class, I happened to think. How many people are here voluntarily? Me being one of them. Mm -hmm. So I asked for them to raise hands. They all raised their hands. Everybody was in there because of a court order, because of their temper and having anger problems. Mm. Or got, being got cited, referred by their therapist to have that, go to that class. Hmm. And while I was going to those classes, Bruce, I was amazed. Is this all military or just anybody, everybody, everybody? This is military? Yes. Okay. At the VA. And okay. the, they bring in uh, counselors and uh, you have uh, group discussions about things, and I could tell right away that the young, educated professionals that they brought us weren't connecting with the vets. You ask a group of vets a question, <laughs> most likely you're going to answer you. If uh, they were asking the vets questions, and the vets wouldn't even answer them. Hmm. Really? Uh, and nobody in that class, on that eight-week class, classes, mentioned suicide. No, 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 no. Not anybody. So, what, so what, what kind of questions were he at? Was he asking? Uh, they try to keep it very basic and general, and uh, I, I feel that a lot of it is uh, it, it's up to you. You take the information and you decide what you're going to do with it. But they're not really connecting with the vets. What what what, what would it take then for them to connect? Well, think? I'm going to take the, the class missing? again, Bruce. I'm going back to anger management. I'm like, and well, I'm like, I mean, I mean, take the class with you. I'm well, I'm going to mention suicide, and I'm going to mention sexual assaults, and I'm mm -hmm. going to mention a lot of things that these people don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mention how the upper echelon of the VA lied about our care so they could get performance bonuses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk a lot of things that are going to make people probably uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that, that, again, that, that is an issue in regards to... So how do we fix that? Well, I think you ought to go take the classes with me. I think I will. I think I will. And then we'll, maybe we'll bring, the, bring the, the, uh, the, the counselor or something on, on board. Sure A lot of those thoughts. VA guys should never get on camera. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. I can imagine. I can imagine. But again, they're having problems. And then that, that transferred to home life. Yeah. And uh, working working conditions, but many of them can't work because of that. You know things of that nature. So so there's there's some issues there. But again, there's a service there for them, 
And the fact of the matter, if the service is not responding to what their needs are, we need to look at it. Again, somebody need to look at it, right? You just made some points there. Well, right. that's, a, that's a very serious thing. And people are getting paid. And, you know, paid and this didn't enough. just happen this year. It happened year after year after year. Wow. Wow. No, something and these people, they get caught and they resign. They still mm -hmm. get their performance bonus. Mm -hmm. They still get their golden parachute retirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, again, uh, we're, we're, I'm talking with Greg here, and we're talking about the issues that are, that are relevant to, to, to vets uh, across the board, you know. And, and, uh, and when you start thinking about the Vietnam vets, you know, we're, we're an older bunch now at this point in time, and, and they definitely have needs, have all sorts of needs, whether it be heart problems, whether it be this, this, that, and the other. And, um, uh, you know, many of us are on, on Social Security and all this, that, and the other, but, hey, the VA is there. You know, they they are there, so please go down there, you know. And that little extra income helps out too a little bit to many of these vets. It does. It, it you know, you if they if once again if they uh, computed the cost of the care of the vets after the wars, we'd never have a war. Mm -hmm. It all has to be part of the budget. Mm -hmm. If you're going to send these people off and do all these different things, you got to consider their care afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very very much so. Uh, better yet, we wouldn't have too many wars if we just just draft everybody. Well, Bruce, I was going to bring out one of those keychains. You got one of your keychains? Yeah, I don't have my keychain that we've been giving out. You don't out. have it today? You got one? I got one of these. I've been to, every time I go to the VA, I pick these up. And mm -hmm. These are little dog tags. You can read that off. Yeah, these are little dog tags. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, one of the yeah. things that Bruce recently gave me. It's a Vietnam. Uh, I got it. A keychain. Vietnam keychain. Yeah. One yeah. of the things that I do is I go to the Vietnam vets. And I give them this, and I thank them for their service. Yeah, and I say, recognizable? I say that, you know, as a, a fellow veteran, I understand a lot of you veterans came back and you were never thanked. Mm -hmm. I thank you, and I'd like to give this to yep, you. Yep, yep, and they like it because it it's brings a, back memories. It's an expeditionary medal. Yep, is yep. that what it is? Yep, yep, yep. yep. You have Vietnam. that. Yep, yep. I've got one, too. Veteran crisis line. Yeah, crisis line. This is a very nice, it's a very nice key change. You know, and like, I give those to, to people all the time so that yep. they have uh, anybody in their family uh, that's having problems, a, a veteran, and they can give him this, and they can give a call. Mm -hmm. There's someone on the other line to chat. And the other thing, too, at that time, that's the door opener, if you will, to, to going out and receiving your benefits. They'll give, they'll I just hate it when the suicide prevention line's busy, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, you know, especially with the new new ID cards, it's, it's kind of neat. You know what I'm saying? Did you get your and, new one? Yeah, I got my new one, and I'm going to share this with the, with the viewing audience here. And, you got your old one? one? I got no, no, I don't have the old one with me. But you got the old one with you? Yeah. It was sharing both. I, I probably shouldn't have it. <laughs> yeah, but, but I got but I got mine. There's one. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got you want you want to take a shot of that, uh, sure, Tom? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's hold great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there we go right there. You know, you got your photo there and then and it, uh, this is the old that's one. That's the old one. This, this is, is the new one. one. Yeah. Right, 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 right. They're very similar. Now they have your service on there. Yep, got the service. And what branch? And what branch you've served in? They lay it out there. You got Marine Corps. You got Coast Guard there, and that's kind of neat. And if you got anything with reference to PTS or anything or medically medically related, that's sitting up there. You got me? Yep. So it's a very neat card. It's got all kinds of information on there too. For questions concerning health benefits, they got the 1877 222 vets. And there is no information of the vet on the card. And that's, that's right. That's right. They got veteran crisis line. They got that on for, foreign medical program. They got that in emergency call. Report any emergency care property of the U.S. government. They found drop in nearest U.S. mailbox. Interesting. Got me? Health equity center. Now, this is a very interesting piece. This is not, this is not a credit card, but you use it. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of the things that you can use now when you check into the VA. They have a little uh, computer kiosk. Right. And right. Uh, you go in and uh, answer questions with a touch screen. And then it scans your card. And then uh, it, it'll automatic. tell you your yep. appointments and everything yep. for the day. Yep. That's why it's very important for any yep. veteran that's, uh, that's uh, receiving care or yep. needs to receive care. Yep. They get one of these cards. Yes, very, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Well, you, you know, again, same thing. You know, you, you know. We're not getting that many calls, but in all due respect, I understand because they don't know, not not having the knowledge, if you will, and um, can't communicate with the vets because a lot of times, you know, they're just sitting there waiting for someone to 
respond to their issues and their needs. So please uh, consider um, taking them over to uh, calling up the calling up the VA. Just call up the VA. There's a one eight hundred number. Just call up the VA and say, look here, uh, my my father or my cousin or my uncle was in the military and uh, they don't have a card. They don't right. have a card. And the other thing about these cards, if you will, you get 10% discounts on all kinds of things. There are many benefits out there that one can get. And Home receive. Depot, Home Lowe's. Home Depot, Lowe's, all of them, anywhere and everywhere. You can go anywhere. But, um, but it's a very important piece, and hopefully it, uh, uh, you, you've benefited from the, from the show. And, and uh, I'm just not uh, – I'm, I'm, this is a very serious thing to me. And, and like Craig is saying, Craig is saying, we're going to go out and we want to try to do more. Because there are some there's some voids here, and yeah, we've been in politics a little bit, and and uh, I want to make sure that uh, this becomes part of the campaign too, uh, and that uh, I noticed that Dennis Richardson at one point in time served in in, in Vietnam. We 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 interviewed Dennis here, and he were, he dons his uh, Vietnam cap, which I think is very important. So he relates to the to the vets, but on the other side of the round, you got folks who would, haven't participated, you know, like. Um, uh, Mr. Governor Kitzhopper, you know, but the fact of the matter is, uh, he is still the commander, he's the commanding general, if you will, of the commander for the Army National Guard. I mean, for the, mili well, for the military here in the state of Oregon. And he too should, he would be recognized, he has to be recognized because he is the commanding chief. And so, uh, and Oregon has some good benefits, some real good benefits Oregon for veterans. Oregon has better veteran benefits than Washington does. How about that? You see that? You, you hear that? Oregon has better benefits than the state of Washington, okay, right? Bruce gets a free plate. I have to pay for my plate. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to have my Vietnam plate down there. You don't have to worry about the, uh, your, your DEQ anymore. That saves a couple bucks. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you can you can visit all of the uh, state parks. At, at, uh, at I no have cost. passes for all the state parks in yeah. Washington, all the state parks in Oregon, and, and the all federal. the national uh, yeah. parks. Yep, yeah. get the national parks. You can go in. At no, it didn't cost you anything to go that aspect of it, and you know, and so and it's and it's deserving too. Because in all due respect, I, I wouldn't. You know, I, I'll just say it right here publicly. I would not have gone and and sought out uh, the fact that uh, I, I had benefits that were bestowed upon me had it not been for Craig sitting right here. I was reluctant. I mean, I just didn't. I didn't feel that. Uh, uh, I My wanted specialist, to go and, pig headed yeah, non -sex. You know, well, but uh, you know, I tell you, that's why he's got PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but no, you know, it's, it's it's not a it's not a light thing. We we try to play it light, but but the fact is, it's a very serious thing, and and folks should know that. Okay, but um, it's there for you. So please reach out, go out, and do it. And and on this particular show, we're we're, we're doing this. I'm doing it every time I, I appear. I'm trying to, trying to let you recognize the fact that I, not only because it's not me as a vet, but I want, I want you to understand that there are vets sitting in your homes and places you're seeing. It. And that, that the other thing that bugged me, was, and I'll, it, it, we're right at the, almost at the end of the deal, but the other, other thing that bugs me is when you see folks out there on the street uh, uh, identifying themselves as vets and I need your, your money. Well, in all due respect, you don't have to give them money. What you do, you can pick, take them up in the car and take them down to the VA and let them get a card that we just shared with you. Then they're a vet. Many people, are, in all due respect, are impersonating. They're impersonating, impersonating. And yeah, the, I saw one the other day, and he had veteran spelled V-E-T-R-A-N. Yeah. I said, you know, you spelled veteran wrong. Did you? He said, oh, really, dude? <laughs> yeah, see? So, so they didn't care that. I don't think he was a vet. No, no he wasn't. <laughs> So, I, so I'm just saying with you, if a person says that they want a handout or this, that, and the other, tell them to show them, show, show you their card. Very easy. Show your card. If they don't have a card, don't give them anything. I'm just straight up with you. I mean, I'm just, just straight up. And I, but on the other hand, they just want to be very honest about it. Say, look, I, I need a little help in the hand or whatever. But please, don't, don't, let the, don't let them identify themselves as a vet. Because the services are there for veterans. They got a home. I mean jobs i mean it's it's all there if they're looking for work if they're if they're alcoholic if they got mental illness they're hunting I mean, for heroes that's, that's uh, right. there's uh all kinds of different options for veterans and there are more and more of them every day right and right. i feel extremely strongly about these veterans that are coming back now and i feel that it's my duty and almost all vets duty to make sure that these guys have it easier coming back 
than you yeah, did, yeah, than yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to be a pleasure working with you on that. You know that we're going to be working. We're going to be working extensively. And well, you're a lucky and, man. Uh, and you know, and so we're gonna we're gonna see if we can bring some of the cats off the streets, and get them get them their benefit, and at the same time educate the public as to that we're not just taking something for nothing. That's a very important piece. That's why we're talking about things like auditing and 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 things of that nature. Auditing these organizations. There should be one central number that whether it be whether you're a public person or a vet that you can call and inquire whether or not this is, is a legitimate organization when you're getting all this material in the mail or whatever, or someone calls you about vets or you're doing, they're doing something for vets, you should be able to pick up the phone, dial the hey number, and ask the person on the other end, this is, I just got this information from so-and-so and so veterans organization, are they legit? I think that's fair. I think that's a fair, fair question. That should be easily done through the VA. The VA should carry the 1-800 number. Correct. Not a private entity. The VA should carry it. That's, that's who it should be. They should be the, the, the person that's, that's supervising uh, the, the, the support. That, because that's, that's who we have to go to anyway. It just right. makes more sense. And then that way we can kind of look at the budget situation. You know what I'm saying? Check that out, too. At the end of the, at the, end of the year, uh, we can check out to see whether or not we're getting benefits. If we're not, cut them off. <laughs> and any disabled veterans want to learn how to go back to school? and learn how to help other veterans, please give me a call. There you go. There you go. That, that's what it's all about. Well, look, folks, it's been enjoyable, and hopefully you've learned something from this particular program with Craig and I, and, and uh, as one would say. And yes. And yes. And yes. Let's not forget yes, okay? <laughs> well, thank you very, very much for, for being a part of the, the show, and, and we'll be looking for you next week. Uh, we will have another enjoyment. We'll try to see if we can get the... Someone, I think that maybe the chairman of the Democratic Party or the chairman of the Republican Party to come and give us an update on what's going on out there because, as you know, we're right in the heat of it all. I think I'll skip reference. that program. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can look at it. You can call in. Will you call in? I'll okay. see how long I can stand it I, on. I, yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that. Well, folks, again, uh, th thank you very, very much. Uh, we, we appreciate that. And please, think about vets. Think about vets. Think about your loved ones. They're very deserving, if you will. And do take care. And vets take care of each other. Okay. And to those Marines out there, Semper Fi, hoorah, take care. And to the Coast Guard, what do they say? Semper Paratus. Semper Paratus. What does that mean? Always ready. Ready? I'm ready. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> take care, folks. Have a good one. Good show. Good job, man. I'm glad you, hey, you came back on in. I appreciate that. And that was Seriously perfect, done. because we were talking about it, remember? And I got the opening. That's how I call you. And then you brought me some good. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> I got to get out there next week, though.